שנה טובה. שנה טובה. It's now eight and a half months for the current Israeli government, the sixth government led by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. This is the most right-wing, the most fundamentalistic, the most zealot and extreme, the most homophobic and anti-LGBTQ, and the most orthodox religious government in the history of Israel. And in this ultra-nationalistic and most right-wing government in our history, we also have an historically high number of ministers who did not serve in the Israeli army, an army where there is a mandatory draft and everyone is supposed to serve. <clears throat> As millions of Israelis are expressing anger and frustration at the right-wing coalition government. When an overwhelming majority of Israelis, according to every poll and every survey in the last eight and a half months, opposes the main agenda of this government, in fact, the only agenda of this government, which is overturning the judicial system. When the majority of Bibi's own party, Likud, voters say that they oppose this agenda, and a third of them declares they will never vote Likud again. Things that were unheard of, inconceivable, became routine with the current Israeli government. An Israeli discourse in the past eight and a half months deals with one thing, how to save Israeli democracy, how to save Israeli identity as a democratic and a Jewish state in the most classic Zionist way and not turn it to something else that the overwhelming majority of Israelis don't wish for. It's the first time since the establishment of the State of Israel and the War of Independence, and for some since the War of Yom Kippur 50 years ago, that there is a growing feeling that this time Israeli society will not be able to hold it together. For many Israelis, this is the most traumatic and the hardest experience they ever experienced in their lives. And nothing of the truths that held the majority of Israeli society together is holding it today. My mother, who fought in the War of Independence together with my dad and was in Israel when Israel was formed, always told me that 1948 and 1949 were the best years of her life. Not because she was young and beautiful, not because all of life was in front of her, but even though both my father and my mother made great sacrifices, lost some of their best friends in the battles for Israel's independence, there was a feeling of great optimism of creating a just and good state, a state where Jews will bring blessing to the world. And none of those truths that are holding Israeli society for the last 75 years is holding it today. People feel that they cannot go on with their normal life, with the day-to-day -day routine. One of the protests that I went when I was in Israel this summer, Eshkol Nevo, a famous Israeli writer, the grandson of Prime Minister Levi Eshkol spoke. He spoke a few years ago from this pulpit, and he mentioned that he begins to cry in the middle of the day, only realizing that he's mourning the state of Israel. There is a feeling 
of fundamental, viol fundamental violation that is happening in Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu, when he was in the opposition doing the previous government, the Bennett-Lapid government, said that it might be legal, that government, but it's not legitimate. It's legal because it was elected democratically, but it has no right to exist. Bibi's own government is legal, but it has no right to do what it's doing to destroy the ethos of democracy and to ruin democratic, democratic institutions. And lately, the government, the ministers, have been attacking the generals of the Israeli army, mainly the chief of staff. It's not a morally legitimate government because the prime minister is indicted in free corruptions indictments, and at the same time that he's standing trial, he's trying to overturn the judicial system and to threaten the judges in his own trial. When Netanyahu was the head of the opposition and Prime Minister Ehud Olmart was just a suspect of corruption, he was not even indicted, Bibi called on him to resign, saying truly that a prime minister that is suspected of corruption, each of their actions will be suspected that it's not for the good and welfare of the people of Israel, but it's for the good and welfare of their judicial problem. If Netanyahu will decide to attack Iran tomorrow morning, I can assure you that's because his trial is not going well. That would be the only reason to do that. It's not a moral government because the head of national security, the head of the police, Itamar Ben-Gvir, is a convicted criminal, convicted eight times on acts of terror against the state of Israel. And he is now the head of the police. He is a person that the Israeli army decided not to draft because they saw him as a danger as a soldier. We can just imagine what it means to Israelis to see such a person heading the police. It's like the government saying to the people, we don't really care about you. And mostly, it's not a morally legitimate government because all it does is a multi-front attack on the successful democratic start-up nation we are also proud of, the Jewish and democratic Israel. If this government will succeed in its attack, we will see the first wave in the history of Israel of ideological emigration outside of Israel. The people that hold the high-tech industry and the startup nation will find a new place to go to. Just one little story. When this government managed to pass the first law in the judicial system, that law that undermines the ability of the Supreme Court to oversee government actions. Now you have to realize, Israel has a very different system of here. In Israel, you have a coalition government, which means that the executive branch also controls the legislative branch, the Knesset. So the only form of checks and balance on the government activities is the Supreme Court. And now they're passing a law not to allow the Supreme Court to do that. So when they passed the first law, a group of 30 physicians formed a WhatsApp group. They called it Relocating Away from Israel, a group for physicians. They were 30 at the beginning. By the end of the day, not even 24 hours, there were 2,000 physicians. By now, 20% of Israeli physicians are part of this group, checking how to emigrate away from Israel. 60% of Israeli doctors go to medical schools in Europe. There are not enough medical schools in Israel. 
That means they all hold foreign licenses. They can decide to relocate themselves to Europe tomorrow morning. They will be welcome there. The best doctors in Israel did their fellowships outside of Israel, mainly in the United States. They can also decide to, to, to relocate. A recent poll that was done among medical students that are studying outside of Israel found out that 75% of them are thinking not to come back if the judicial system will pass. Only eight and a half months that Bibi is the prime minister. The Israeli shekel is down 15% compared to the, to the dollar. 80% of new high-tech companies decided to register outside of Israel. The investments in the Israeli high-tech, the most important part of Israeli economy, is down 90% in eight and a half months. And Citibank, Morgan Stanley, and some other banks have issued a warning to their investors, to their clients, not to invest in Israeli economy. On the eve of the elections that Bibi won, we had a different government. It was the first hybrid government in the history of Israel, led by Prime Ministers Yair Lapid and Naftali Bennett. All three international rating companies for credit ratings said, forecasted, that Israel will get an upgrade in its international credit ratings. Now all three companies are warning that they are going to downgrade Israel's economy and Israel's international credit rating. We have two, we have two flags on our BIMA. We have the American flag right there, and we have the Israeli flag down here. We're not unique. Every synagogue in North America has those two flags. They are a symbol of our connection to our beloved democratic and Jewish Israel. We must develop two voices, two voices when it comes to Israel. One, defending Israel as strong as we can against those who say that Israel doesn't have the right to exist. And the other voice is sharp criticism on this current Israeli government that is trying to make Israel into a criminal state. We can learn from the protest movement in Israel. Every week, millions of Israelis are taken to the streets covered with Israeli flags. You saw the video. Everyone is carrying a flag or is wrapped with a flag. These are not anarchists or radicals or leftists, as Bibi calls them. This is the center patriotic Israel. A big part of the protest movement are reservists. 80% of the reservists in the elite and most important units in the Israeli army are part of the protest movement. And they are threatening that if Israel will cease to be a democratic country, if the Supreme Court won't be able to control the acts of the government, especially a government like this one, that already some of her ministers are calling for war crimes as a policy, they will refuse to go to the army. The protests are shouting two things. You probably heard Demokratia, meaning democracy. The other slogan is Busha, shame. Shame on this government that is desecrating the Zionist ethos. The leader of the protest movement, Professor Shikma Bresler, just at the protest after Rosh Hashanah said the following, we have a zealot extreme, chauvinistic, corrupt, homophobic, and racist government that is trying to overtake Israeli democracy 
with more than 225 laws to overturn what Israeli democracy stands for. They don't care about safety or security. They don't care about Israeli economy and definitely not about the strength of Israeli society. They care about money, about power, about personal interest and sectorial interest. And we are now in a crucial moment. It is not a protest against Israel. It's a protest for Israel, for a Jewish and democratic Israel. Eight and a half months, at least once a week, many times two or three or four times a week, millions of Israelis take to the street. It's our duty, our right to support them, to support those good people that are fighting for a good and just and democratic and Jewish Israel. Shana Tova.